this point in time, we don't know the optimal timing or contents of a hemostatic workup for heavy menstrual bleeding in adolescents. And this is particularly challenging because oftentimes adolescents are stressed, both physiologically from iron deficiency um, from their heavy menstrual bleeding and from a psychological standpoint due to being either in a clinic or in the ER and being worried about a blood draw or about the visit itself. And we know that von Willebrand factor and factor eight can be affected by this. And so we are trying to decide what is gonna be the best time to test these, whether if it's in the acute setting in an emergency department, or if we should wait for an alternative time um, just due to the, the way that uh, von Willebrand factor and factor eight changes. And so this study was looking to address when we draw those labs in the emergency department setting, is it helpful in diagnosing girls with bleeding disorders, or is this just a cost without any benefit? We initiated a protocol in our emergency department and inpatient pediatric unit to standardize both the evaluation and the treatment of girls with heavy menstrual bleeding. So these girls were identified in the emergency department by our emergency room providers. Um, if they claimed to have a menstrual complaint, they would see if they met a screening criteria for heavy menstrual bleeding that was adapted from the Phillips screening tool. And if they did meet one of those criteria for heavy menstrual bleeding, the provider would choose an smart set, which is integrated into the emergency medical record, where it gave a list of tests to order and treatments to give for girls who had heavy menstrual bleeding in order to standardize the care that we were giving them. As we had realized in the past, it was quite variable depending on the emergency room provider who they were seeing and even the hematologist who they talked to. And so by initiating this protocol, we were able to identify them in the, in the, in the emergency room and try to streamline their care. So I think these re results are interesting in thinking about when is the optimal timing to do von Willebrand's testing in adolescents with heavy menstrual bleeding. In an ideal world, we would test these girls at follow-up after the bleeding and the anemia had resolved, as that would eliminate that factor of stress leading to false diagnoses. However, in practicality, there is a real struggle with follow-up. And in our patient population of over 200 girls, only 17% of them had the follow-up necessary to go through the, the process of ensuring whether or not they had a bleeding disorder. So at this time, at least at our institution, we feel like it's best to continue some upfront testing with the knowledge that if we can improve the system of follow-up to get them into the hematology clinic as we had hoped, that we would move that testing up into a time where they are not acutely stressed. So there are a few directions that we're hoping to take this research. First, from a quality improvement standpoint at our institution, we're initiating an automatic referral process to hematology from any adolescent girl who's seen with heavy menstrual bleeding in the emergency department. By doing that, if we can improve our follow-up, then we can hopefully take the step to moving that initial von Willebrand study testing to the, the clinic in a, in a state where the patients are less stressed. However, we need to ensure that we are able to actually get them in for follow-up due to the, the poor follow-up that we've seen uh, so far. Um, we also have, um, would like to collect more data on the girls who were seen in the past, as some of them are still continuing to follow up in our clinic um, to see if that will improve the accuracy of, this, um, of the data that we have, have come up with thus far.